everyone. Today on the Writing Gym Podcast, we're talking with author Aggie LJ about the top tips to avoid hiring the wrong editor. You're going to walk away with specific tips on how to make the right choices when it comes to producing quality work and editing. And if you're tired of struggling to get your book out, to publish your book, and find your readers, if you're not even sure where your readers hang out, you need to download the freebie to stop struggling and finally publish. Go to www.datewithamuse.com slash six secrets for our freebie downloadable little booklet all about how to go from struggling writer to published author. Hi, I'm Andy, personal trainer at The Writing Gym. I'm so excited to introduce you to this week's guest, but first, a word from our sponsor, The Writing Gym. You know, you could break free from feeling like your writing is never good enough. You could write freely and achieve your publishing dreams. You're tired of rejection and lying awake till 2 a.m. wondering how you could have fixed your manuscript. Wallowing in self-doubt is not getting you any closer to your writing goals. You need real standards, real support, and real change. Are you ready to transform your writing and take it from the slush pile to publishable? We are currently accepting select writers in our writing gym programs. Please visit www.datewithamuse.com slash book a call to talk to Annalisa Parent about your writing now. Also, if you're interested in an amazing way to boost your writing career right now, Download our free booklet, The Six Secrets to Go from Struggling Writer to Published Author at www.datewiththemuse.com slash six secrets. As always, all of this information will be included in our show notes. And now to introduce this week's fabulous guest, the lovely Aggie. Aggie is a retired hospitality professional. She worked as a waitress slash hostess slash bartender slash floor manager for several decades before forming a partnership that led to an eventual marriage with her husband, Ken, and developing one of the best steakhouses in the mid-Atlantic states. When they sold their steakhouse in 2007, she became the purchasing and logistics manager at the Nemecolin Spa, a destination resort spa in the Laurel Highlands of western Pennsylvania. In 2010, she became a licensed massage therapist and in 2012 started copywriting for jazz festivals and theater programs, doing bios and write-ups for performing artists. However, this world is not perfect. In the Bible, Proverbs 9-11 tells us that time and unforeseen occurrence befall us all. Her unforeseen occurrence happened in 2013. Due to an opioid addiction, in March 2013, her daughter took her life. She hadn't seen her in almost two years or her son-in-law and her two teenage grandsons. And after her death, she tried to get back in touch with her estranged family. And even though her son-in-law was very positive and hopeful, her grandsons wanted no part of her. Grief is a terrible companion. Determined to recover and after some counseling, she decided that she had to come up with a way to console her grieving heart. She'd written many things in the past since elementary school, short stories, poetry, a one-act play that was produced in high school, and a musical. Since she had been copywriting successfully, she came up with the idea to write a story about a grandmother and her grandsons who dissolve into water and find themselves in another world where they embark on fabulous adventure. Four years later, the water door has finally beaten its path to a professional writing coach and editor, Annalisa Parent, who will work with her and to see to it that it is published and that Aggie finally becomes an author. And now we're going to talk to the fabulous Aggie. How are you today? I'm fabulous. What else? <laughs> How are you, Miss Andy? <laughs> I am doing very well, Aggie. Um, for our listeners, Aggie was a part of our writing gym VIP group and is now uh, going to be part of be part of our publishing mastermind. So Aggie is going from the beginning and written her whole book, just sent out her final manuscript the other day and is on to working on becoming a published author. Aggie, how does it feel? Um, I tell you what, when I, when I finished it, because, um, well, actually, you know, I went to the London retreat, and every time Annalisa and I had a one-on-one, she, boy, she just hit, just kept driving the point home about how I needed to hone 
my manuscript and write from a different point of view. So after the retreat and after I got home, I had two weeks to get finished. She told me my deadline was June 18th. So I had two weeks to get finished and I sat down and from the beginning to the end, I rewrote the entire book in two weeks. That is crazy. When I finished Saturday night, I think I sat, I was just sitting and staring at my screen and my husband happened to come home from work and he said, are you all right? Are you okay? I'm like, <laughs> I think I finished my book. He said, you finished? I said, I'm done. I'm really done. And, and I just sat there and he goes, are you going to be all right? <laughs> That's what it felt like. I mean, after four years of trial and error and stumbling and hitting mental blocks and physical blocks. And I mean, it, and it was just like to sit there and realize. And then my husband ran me down to Office Max and we had it printed up and bound. And then I had my picture taken with it. And I just held it, you know? You know how people tell you, oh, this, but this is my baby. I can't do this. I can't get I felt like, oh my gosh, I finally feel like uh, this is my baby. <laughs> when it's something to hold, you're like, this is it. <laughs> um, you talked about the trials and the tribulations and the ups and downs. Um, yes. What we're really going to focus on in this episode is, is editing because it's something that we've had a lot of people write in and ask questions about. It's something we constantly feel things in the Facebook group about. By the way, listeners, if you're not a member of our Right to Publish Facebook group, get in there. We're fantastic. If I do need to toot my own horn. Um, but, you know, that's something that constantly people are asking about. You know, how do I find the right editor? editor? How do I find a good editor, editor? How do I know that these people aren't just trying to take my money? We've gotten so many writers in the group, in the Facebook group, and in the VIP group where these people, you know, quote unquote, edit their books but, you know, it's, you know, the friend of a friend of somebody's third cousin on your mother's side who one time did something and, you know, now they're editing. And it ends up, you know, these people get their books back and they're not good quality work. And then they're, you know, slamming their head against the wall going, why am I not getting published? Why am I not getting published? What did I do wrong? And it's just such an important step that you can't skimp on. Um Aggie, you have a story about that. You had an experience with, with an editor. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I sure can. <laughs> when I decided to write my story, like, I, like you said in the bio, um, I went online and found through a couple of websites, found what I thought would be a good editor. And she came highly recommended by one of the websites, one of the um, self-publishing websites. So I, uh, I got in touch with her online and she called me and we talked about, and we talked for about an hour and she says, I think that I would like to work with you. And I said, great, okay. Well, there began uh, the trial and error because I would send her pieces of my manuscript and of course I'm a panzer. So it's not all one piece, okay. And, um, she would edit it and send it back and say, this is good, that's good, don't do this, don't do that, okay. And I would write a little more and then I would get in touch with her and she would take my money and she would do, read what I wrote and she'd say, okay, this and that, this and that. She never, and I have my notes right here, just to remind me. The thing of it is, is that I am a customer service person. I mean, that's my training. Customer service means a lot to people and when you are paying money for a service, it should come with the perks of customer satisfaction. So she would take my money, but she would never let me call her. She would never email me to ask how I was doing. There was no support, no anything, just, oh, I have some chapters for you to read. Okay, well, pay me this much money and I'll look over it. And that's all it was for three years. And finally, I took my, what I thought my finished manuscript was last year, I took it to the, to the um, conference, the Writer's Digest Conference in New York. And I pitched my book to eight agents. And I sent it to a couple of them and I immediately got refused, you know, got, nope, 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 nope. And I'm like, well, it's finished. At the time it was 300 plus pages. Andy. And I thought the story is good and this and that and this and that. And then at the conference, I walked up to the pantser booth, storytelling for pantsers. 
And here's this little tiny person ranting and raving because somebody stole her scarf. <laughs> oh, I remember this. And I was like, wow, that, that just sucks. And she, I know. And I said, but did it. And we went over this whole thing. And I stood there and talked to her for half an hour. She said, you, did you see my, my program? And I said, I saw part of it because I wanted to see hers. And I wanted to see Stephen James. And they were basically scheduled at the same time, if you remember. And um, so I saw part of his and part of hers. And I said, you're at least a parent. And she was like, and we just started talking. So after talking with me, I said, would you be interested? Of course. Yes. So after the conference, I scheduled an hour with her. And the rest is history. And now my book is 242 pages instead of 300. And what, so I cut almost 100 pages out of my book. And she has worked with me. And Andy, you have worked with me. The network of support in Annalisa's, um, what do you want to call it? Her world, I call it the world, the pantsing world, <laughs> is unparalleled. You never have a moment. Even you, Andy, I can send you a text and say, Blah! And, you, <laughs> and you write back and you say, no, Abby. <laughs> But that's what's needed. That was what I was lacking for so long. And so many hundreds and whatever, thousands of dollars later, now I have found Annalisa. And within less than a year, I have a manuscript that I was able to send to her and know, know that it will be honed and little nips and tucks down here. And it will be published. There is no doubt in my mind. Yeah. I've never heard that before, Andy. Yeah. It makes a it makes a difference. I think that one one thing that really differs the programs that Annalisa has worked so hard to hard to develop um, is, you know, that that one on one relationship that she has with yeah. each and every one of her authors. You know, she she the reason that she makes you go and book a call is because she personally speaks with each and every one of her authors for that hour. And it's a decision between the both of you if you wanna to work together. It's not just, you know, send her an email, oh, well, you have a completed manuscript, please send me the first 10 pages and also pay me $40 and then we'll, be, and then we'll finish this. You know, it's less, while it is still a business transaction because, you know, writing a book is a business, Selling a book is a business. This is all what, you know, everyone eventually wants to make this a career, which is why they're here in this program. You know, it's also that that personal aspect of it, that, you know, customer service aspect of it that you talked about. Yeah, and I, uh, let me interrupt just for a second, Andy. I beg your pardon. No, um, go ahead. The thing of it is, is uh, I have been an entrepreneur. When you are an entrepreneur, you are a risk you take that risk of either success or failure and you invest in your success because you don't have that thought of, Oh, this is going to fail. No, you have to keep moving and you keep moving. The thing of it is when you become an author, I don't care what you think you are an entrepreneur. You are a business person. There is more to it than, then, Oh, well, my book is on the shelf. Thank you very much, everybody. No, <laughs> It goes beyond that, and not only that, but even even I, uh, I've already started on the second book, and I'm writing a separate book. I'm writing a cozy mystery. So I have actually gotten in, because of you, because of Annalisa, I have developed new work habits. I mean, I'm a retired person. I don't have to do anything if I don't want to, right? But it has gotten me into the routine of actually doing my job now as a writer. Good. That's what I like to hear because, you know, as your personal trainer, the one who was literally talking to you every week being like, did you do your job? <laughs> I mean, do you pay to go to college? Do you pay whatever to go to college and get an education yeah. that you may not even know will even get you a job? So why not invest in a program that will give you the results that you want and let you Fulfill your dream. Everybody has dreams. Exactly. Take one and fulfill it, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I love that, Aggie. Um, 
And speaking of, you know, paying for a program that, you know, really gets you to your goals, um, going back to that first editor that you had, you said that that editor came, you know, highly recommended from a couple of websites, you know, that, you know, on paper, it seemed like it was going to work out. Why, why, why did it seem that way? Was this, you know, did this person edit a lot of other people's work? Like what led you to the conclusion that this might be something that could work? Um, the other, the companies, both two companies recommended her. I don't know if I'm allowed to say their name, so I won't, <laughs> but um, they're, they're big. Okay. There, there's some of the top ones out there. They recommended her. She has um, like 38 books of her own that she has written. And you think to yourself, okay, this person writes, and she also writes for USA Today. And you think, okay, this person must know, right? She comes highly recommended. She has her own website, you know, and, and it's all about editing a novel for people. But, and, and even her, her website's really cute. And, and she's a very nice person. It, it, she, I was not getting, and I realized this at the conference and looking and looking at all the different courses and the different programs that were out there. My book was ridiculous it was long it was wordy i'm writing for kids kids don't want what i had written and and trust me when i started writing and i wrote it from my perspective as a grandmother and i wrote it about a grandmother with two grandsons so i and i was emotionally um what's the word i want committed to this project because it was also a way for me to get over my grief of losing my daughter however that's not what people are, they don't want to read that. Boys, the boys don't care that grandparents are kissing each other and they love each other and that's really nice. And I, <laughs> let's, let's go on adventure and let's go look at dinosaurs and let's go into the castle and let's go into the spooky this. And that's what they want. So Annalisa made me aware of the audience that I was writing to. And I had to give up my emotional attachment to be able to, and, and not give up my talent, not give up what I had written. You understand what I'm saying? Not give up the heart of my story, but write it so that people would enjoy it. Yeah. And that kids would enjoy it. Yeah. So it sounded like, it sounds like what you're saying is that the editor that you originally worked with was very, was very cut and dried process. It was, you know. She didn't understand my audience. Yeah. Well, and that, and that the fact that, you know, she had published 38 books, you know, I think that what makes the difference is that you can be a fantastic editor and have that very cut and dried approach. And that works for some authors, you know, the send me two chapters, I'll edit that, I'll send it back, it'll be done. But, you know, if they're just editing without having that personal relationship with you or without having a real idea of your audience and what you need, then they're just, you know, they're editing for a little bit of content and grammar. They're not, right. you know, That's thinking right. of you as a whole author. Right. And, and the other part of that is, is that, you know, you said she wrote 38 books and this is a conversation that Annalise and I have constantly is that the skill set of being an author is a completely different skill set than being, you know, a writing coach and an editor. And Annalise says both. She's a fantastic author. You know, those of you that have read Storytelling for Panthers, you know, any of her other works, the way that she puts her personality onto the page and the way you can feel her talking to you when she, when you read her words is amazing. But, you know, her training as a teacher, her training in neuroscience, those things have made her a fantastic writing coach. And then her, you know, her fantastic background with language is what lends itself so well to her editing capabilities. And it's all of that rolled on to one to this tiny little package of a person. <laughs> Andy, it's not even just that. What I appreciate about Annalisa it is the time that she puts into to contacting agents, contacting publishing companies, getting to understand what these places want. And then she regurgitates that to her clients, to us. To people like me who, okay, I'm writing for kids. I'm not writing for grandmothers. Get with it. What do you want? You know, and she put that to me just like that. What do you want? What do you want to sell? She knows. She's out there. She's in the industry. She contacts people. She, she's constantly learning herself about what this industry needs. And she has all these people 
that want in. Every we all want into that industry. So how can she get them from their their scrambled up manuscript, which is what pantsers do, and put it together and make that puzzle work so that it goes on to somebody else and somebody says, that's what I want. That's what I want in my publishing house. Yeah. And I think having the, the life of a writer can be such a solitary thing. You know, when you, when you write, you sit down at a computer or you sit down with your, you know, your pen and your paper and it's your ideas that you're putting on a page. And I feel like we all tend to kind of see it as a very solitary activity. So having this support group, you know, meeting the people that you've met, you know, through the retreats, the people that went through the, the programs with you, the people that are going to go through the program with you as you, you know, progress through the publishing mastermind, you know, having Annalisa in your corner, having me in your corner, you know, these people whose, whose purpose it is, whose joy they take from making sure that your book gets published is so amazing to know that, you know, you have that community. I can't believe that when I text you, you text me back. <laughs> I mean, I, it took me, I don't know how many times I requested of this other editor, please call me, please can we have a discussion? Nothing. Not, and even after I took that manuscript to New York City and pitched it, did you, did you think she ever gave me a phone call or even an email to say, hey, how did it go? Nothing. Well, I'm sorry, but that sucks. <laughs> what did I pay her for? To dot my I's and cross my T's? No. And I had so many, I love the L-Y's and I-N-G's. I mean, I, I think that half of those hundred pages I took out of my book were L-Y and I-N-G. I, I swear. Why didn't she tell me that that's not acceptable? Yes, I write copy. I mean, uh, copywriting. Oh, my goodness. You talk about redundancy. but. I mean, people, copywriting is the junk mail that you get in the mail and you throw out. That's what copywriters do. Although I did do some other things for programs and other things. But nobody ever told me when you're writing a manuscript and especially writing for, for kids the way I am, nobody explained to me what needed to be done except Annalisa. And then when I did that whole passive aggressive thing where she's like, you're not doing it. Not doing what I told you. And then and then I'd be like, yeah, but you're beating up on me. She goes, do you want me to tell you the truth or do you want me to blow smoke up your skirt like the other editor did and just take your money? And then I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. You had a point, but also, uh. <laughs> And it's all good. I had a little pouty pout a couple times, but she was right. And there's no getting around what's right and wrong. Annalisa Parent, storytelling for Panthers. Everyone that works with her, all of the people that are on board in the writing gym and writing for publish, the whole thing is just step by step. It's not overwhelming. You do what you can do when you can do it, and she's there. Uh, it's that is amazing. Andy, when, when you text me back, I'm like, I know this girl has a life, <laughs> you know, and I feel bad when I, when I do that, but you guys, and, and yeah, this program, if anybody is serious, as serious as I was, because when I get my book published and I'll tell you this too, Andy, I've already contacted different foundations for opioid addiction and I am going to donate every time I write a book, a percentage is going to go to Shatterproof Foundation for helping families through opioid addiction and also to Vance Johnson who is in Pennsylvania. He's a football NFL player who was addicted for many years and now his foundation helps families and addicts that are working their way into sobriety and that's what this book is going to help too. I love that Aggie. I love that you know I I think that Annalisa works very hard to find writers to put in her program that, you know, she feels like would be a good fit. And I'm so glad that you came through the program because, you know, just watching you grow as an author, having you come in and being like, well, I have this book, but it did terribly at the conference and I couldn't figure out why. And going from, you know, that first time where you came into the first, you know, personal training sessions feeling 
frustrated and upset and not being able to get, get things on the page to the point of coming in and being like, yeah, uh, you know, getting text messages from you that are just like, I edited 25 pages today. I'm going to finish the last 10 tomorrow and then we're done here. Andy, and uh, that's part of it, the, the support groups that you do and make just making sure how are you doing, what's going on, you know, and what's distracting you. Oh my gosh, that just means so much, especially when you're, when you're, when you're struggling. And it, and it can be, it, it's challenging. And it can be that you're sitting there and you're just going, oh, <laughs> you, know? you, you, you have to have that support. And it is a solitary thing that you're doing, but nobody understands what you're going through except other writers. Nobody understands what you're doing. Oh, you're writing a book. Isn't that nice? You know, people don't get it. Or they think it's so easy. Oh, you're writing a book. Huh, great. It's like owning a restaurant. And I've owned a restaurant. People think you're a rock star. They think you have a charmed life. Well, let me tell you the facts. It's work. And it's 24-7. And yes, everybody sees the fruition of all of that. Nobody sees the back work. Nobody sees what goes on behind the scenes. And it is work. Authors, and that is one thing where Annalisa says, look, you're actually good at what you do. When she does salons and you do those 20 minute writing things, those prompts, she gives you a couple of words and you have to write something that makes sense, you know, and it's just like, blah, 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 right? <laughs> and then you, and then you hear what other people have written to those prompts and then you read what you've written and you're like, gosh, darn it. If I can't do this, <laughs> I really can do this. This is great. You know? Yeah. It, it's, these programs are like nothing else out there. And, and I, and I hope and I pray and I keep prayers going for people who are out there struggling to do what they love and struggle with their dreams. And I pray for them to someday realize their dreams. And I hope that those that are in the programs now are even remotely thinking about it. My prayers are with them and my heart goes out to them because they can do it, Andy. And Annalisa and you and everybody with Storytelling for Panthers and Date with the Muse, you are all to be thanked, even from the bottom of my heart, for being there and for your hard work to help us put good literature into the world that people will read and hopefully have some joy brought into their lives because they're reading. And congratulations on your end, too. Well, thank you. It's, it's always nice hearing that you did a good job. And I think that, you know, what our listeners should really get out of this is that, you know, finding a right editor isn't just about going online and reading reviews and having people, you know, say someone, you know, this person has published a bunch of, a bunch of books and they've edited this and, that and this and that. It's the relationship that you build between yes. yourself and, you know, your editor, your writing coach, the community of writers that you're in. And that's yes. the relationship that will support you and, and push you forward in your goals and lead you to that published manuscript. And if you don't have that kind of support in an editor and a writing coach in a community, then you're yes. never going to reach that goal. That's right, Andy. And the fact that Annalisa lacks what I would call an ego, she puts herself out there. You know, what she does, is, and people have to see value in that. That is value, Andy. Um, the, the, the programs are out there. She means the Hello. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was my doorbell. Welcome to New York City. <laughs> Sorry about that, listeners. <laughs> Hopefully we can edit that out later. <laughs> I don't. You're funny. You're funny. But listen, Andy, yes. Um, storytelling for Panzers one of the funniest and most important books I think I've read for writers. Then um, they're out there and I love Stephen James and I'll say that honestly. I love because it was story trumps structure and he was right. You know, when, when we're writing, some, I don't even know what happens next. Sometimes I have to stop and say, oh, wow, that's really good. What happens next? You know, and then you start writing because you have to find out. You don't really know, right? But Annalisa pulled that out of me. She 
hold that ability to say, all right, now, you've, you've written this, the clarity is there. Now, add to it, go with it, you know, pull, pull that creativity, get the imagination juices running, and, and finish that thought. I'm telling you, when I, when I held that book and I knew that it was good, it'll be better because it has to go through that whole thing yet. But when I start writing re real query letters, oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I, I think like I'm ready. Yeah. And I think that's the most beautiful thing of this program is that when you get to the end of it, when you have your final revised manuscript, you are putting quality work out there. And that's, that's right. beyond important. And so, you know Sorry, I need the big final question that I have that we ask everyone who comes on our podcast, which I'm sure you already know what I have to ask you anyway, is if you could give one piece of advice to aspiring authors, what would it be? Find the right coach. Find that coach and stick with it. And I recommend Annalise to everybody. I have her business cards. I hand them out everybody that I see I'm writing a book oh you are yeah oh I've written a book oh well here's a card <laughs> you know the, I mean when something is really good it's like we had a steakhouse everybody came to us celebrities came to us and we were very famous at the time because we took one product and we made it the best it could be that's what Annalisa does she's a great writing coach She's an even better editor, and she's a wonderful friend. To have somebody like that in your corner when you're taking the risk, put your work out there and have people read it and criticize it one way or the other, to have the bravery to go ahead and do that, you need that writing coach. You need a good one. And Annalisa Parent puts the bill 100%. All right, all of our aspiring authors, you heard it here first. Get yourself a good coach and a good editor, which I think is the best advice that we've heard here in a while. Um, and it's very important advice. And I thank you so much, Aggie, for joining us and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate it. Oh, my. You know, this has been, like, the most fun. I told Annalisa, I said, you know that you're stuck with me for the rest of your life. You know, it's like, <laughs> kind of like owning a parrot, you know? <laughs> They're just always there. So, and she, as she does, she laughs at that. So I, I look forward to writing more with her and, and publishing more books with her, Andy. So here and we go. And when you do publish your books, we will most certainly be posting about it all over our Facebook Right to Publish group. So listeners, if you are not a part of that, make sure you go to Facebook and search for Right to Publish. Um, the little icon is a picture of Annalise, so you guys can't miss it. Um, thank you all so much for joining and listening to us here on the Writing Gym podcast. And, you know, Aggie has given us some great tips today. And the biggest one of those was find the right writing coach, find the right editor. And coming from someone who had a bad experience with an editor, that is amazing advice. So if you are going to get serious about writing, if you have that manuscript in your head and you want to publish, please consider the Writing Gym programs. All you have to do is go to www.datewiththemuse.com slash book a call and spend an hour of your time talking to Annalisa, seeing if she's the right fit, seeing if you're the right fit for her. And if that relationship works out well, you could be where Aggie is with a completed manuscript on your way to publishing. Thank you so much for joining us here to pump up your writing here on the Writing Gym podcast. And if you love these tips and tricks, also make sure to go to www.datewiththemuse.com slash six secrets to download the six secrets to go from being a struggling writer to a published author. Thank you all so much for joining us here on the Writing Gym podcast. Happy writing. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Writing Gym podcast. If you found these tips important to your writing and really want to see what you can do next, please go to www.datewiththemuse.com slash six secrets for a free download all about how to become a published author. 
If you are being a struggling writer right now and having the hardest time figuring out how to make that next step, make sure and go to www.datewithamuse.com slash six secrets. Thank you so much for listening and happy writing.